One thing I left out is happy anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> happy anniversary. And uh, inter lately, uh, Eugene Sensei and Ellen Sensei have been talking about Shume in America. But I left the in out, sorry guys. <laughs> happy 40th anniversary and 27th anniversary of Shume in America. Uh, fostering health, happiness, and harmony for all. In many ways, I want you to experience not just the words that I have to say, but what it is like for you to attend my retreats. That's what I have primarily been doing for Shumei, is delivering retreats. And in those retreats, we act out things. We do things. We are actually trying to learn and be infused with Kenan, touched in our daily lives in every way by Mishisama's message in the ways that we take them. So to begin with, I would like for you to raise your right or left hand. I don't care which one, whichever one you want. And we're going to go down vertically. And we're going to say a Japanese word, shoujo. Can you do that with me? One, two, three, shoujo. OK. And then we're going to go parallel across. You ready? Daijo. One more time. Daijo. OK, in the center where those two intersect, Ihara Sensei taught me there's a very special spot called Izunome. And that is really where the spiritual blossoms. We are in full balance, or hodo, as he would say. So if you don't know the meaning of the words, don't worry. As we go through, we'll learn them, OK? Shoujo, Daijo, Izunome. Izunome. OK, one more, right? But wait, let me tell you what it is. It's going to be a big circle like Eugene Sensei talked about, the whole, the whole world, OK? So you ready? Shoujo, Daijo, Izunome. You ready? Big circle. Say Kaijin. Say it again. Say Kaijin. OK, one more time. Shoujo, Daijo. Izunome, say kaiji. How's that? <laughs> Can you wait? Eugene says it. My slideshow will tell you it all. <laughs> OK, I uh, decided that I have to open my heart to you today and not just cover, but tell you why, what happened to me. I had a calling, and this is what we would say in the Eastern tradition, but also spiritually, divine power is coming down. You ready? Shoujo. OK, one more time. Shoujo. OK, here is my first shoujo experience. You can see this is at Hunter, New York. And the real star of this is the balcony out there that you can't see because it's in the dark and I didn't take a picture. This is when I first met Shumei in 1999, the spring of 1999, on that balcony. And I didn't know who these people were, really. Eugene Sensei says, do you want to chant with us? <laughs> and we go out in the balcony and we chant the Amatsuno Rita. And my heart just went, what is this? What is the meaning of this? And I felt deeply called. So that was my first shoujo experience. The second one, and I hope I can get through this without crying a little bit. Um, I went to Japan the following March, so I really did start March 2000. And I was there for two things. One was to do a retreat at Kashima, and the second thing was to meet Kaicho Sensei. And so that's a moment I will never forget at Masono. I even remember what dress I was wearing, <laughs> and what we were talking about was world peace. And I had been trained in Native American uh, traditions and had done four years of what they call a vision quest up on a hill without food and water. And before I went, uh, I don't remember if it was you or Hara Sensei or who it was, Ellen Sensei, that told me about Meishu Sama's vision. So I asked Ihara Sensei, could we go up before sunrise, as Meishu Sama did, and honor him at the top of Mount Nokagiri? <sighs> So it was dark, it was cold, it was drainy, and everyone kept saying to me, 
I think it's Eno, he was not a sensei yet. Is that correct, Eno? Okay, uh, he kept saying, you're never gonna see the sun in March at the top of Mount Nagiri. And we climbed and climbed and climbed because there was no car at that hour of the morning. And when we got up there, we set everything up for our prayers. It was still dark. And then what happened was the sun shone. It was coming up slowly. And I looked down at my feet and I was standing on a plaque that said from this spot, the Japanese people, or soldiers, were able to see the American bombers coming toward Tokyo. That shook me to the core. And I wanna just tell you that I was, my parents found out that I was, they were pregnant with me, I was their first child. And they were driving back from the doctor and they heard about Pearl Harbor. My father was in the army and they instantly knew that there would be war and he would go to war. I was born August 9th. When I was a small child, I learned that was the day, I get very emotional about these things, that Nagasaki was bombed. So on the one hand, I had the Japanese people bombing America. On the other hand, something horrible that's beyond our human understanding that we did to the Japanese people. So at that moment, I looked around. The sun had come up. Meisha Sama's vision had called us there. And what were we praying for? What were we working for? Japanese and Americans are standing there. We are working for Seikaijin, world citizens, the whole, that Ihara, uh, that, uh, I'm sorry, Eugene, Eugene Sensei talked about in his talk. I've gotten very emotional, and I want to tell you one more thing, is that uh, I am quite ashamed of our country right now. I know politics aren't supposed to be here, but I am going to bring this up. I do not want us to be at war. And I've been really different times crying about this, and I wasn't even sure I could come here and deliver this talk. So when I reached here in Pasadena, I thought, I can't even go see anyone right now. I have to go somewhere by myself. And I sat in my car, and I asked for Mesha Sama's help. And I remembered, he reminded me, he was opposed to World War II. vehemently opposed, although he kept his ideas to himself so he could have safety and do his work. But here's the story that touches my heart. He stayed true to his work. When, at the end of the war, some of, most of you probably know this story, but for those that don't, Meisha Sama received a Japanese soldier he received anyone. We were all children of the earth. And the person came in, the soldier came in, and he sat down and he began lamenting and saying how sorry he was that the Japanese had surrender, surrendered. But Meisha Sama, he didn't feel so sorry. He was quiet, and he helped the soldier even though the soldier didn't know. But finally, the soldier's so frustrated, he says, Sir, aren't you Japanese? Meaning, aren't you appalled at our surrender? And Meisha Sama says, I am a citizen of the world. I am a citizen of the world. That was his answer, taking the soldier beyond the nationalism out to the earth herself. So even though I may not have the time to go through everything that I have been sharing with um, Shumei, thank you for listening. Um, I do want to say that everything I've done for Shumei has been at my great pleasure because I've been able to explore and share with Shumei members who really the star of this, uh, my goal for world citizenship, 
which I had the minute I heard of Nag Nagasaki's bombing. I might have been seven years old. So now I'm going to ask you all, if you are comfortable declaring yourself as a world citizen, we're going to take that divine step and we're going to say, Shoujo, you ready? Anybody want to be a world citizenship citizen here? Okay, one, two, three, Shoujo. That's our yes. Then Daijo is the application of Shumei through, um, of Shoujo throughout the world. That's Daijo, you ready? Shoujo, Daijo, okay. <clears throat> so one of the things I did in my retreats, and this is something I presented in Hiroshima, I tried to stick between 2000 and 2010, because Guru Sensei asked me to come there and to work with uh, assistant senseis, assistant teachers, and Sewani people who were helping. And so I invited them to work with three different, six different ideas, but I'd like to share three of the things today and also ask you to be part of that. So the first one on, our, on your left there is in Japan, people practicing something called active listening, our ears, right? What is active listening? It is giving respect to another person's sacred self. It is really truly listening. Not listening with the idea of our answers and how we're gonna help them or an irritation for stories we've heard over and over again, but deeply, deeply listening. It's something you can use by simply repeating back to the person in your own words what they have said, and it really helps for us to hear what we are saying to each other. You ready? Active listening, everybody. <laughs> a different kind of hearing, a deep hearing. We work with that. We also work with the practice of keeping an open heart. And that's really simple. If you feel comfortable doing it, take a nice deep breath in. Go ahead and just imagine that as you're exhaling, your heart is opening. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Again. You can use that to help yourself whenever you're upset, to open your heart. All right. Um, each of these, to me, is a practice that helps us embody the canon or the God's representative of compassion and mercy that Misha Sama was infused with. And the third thing is gratitude. I just wanted to share this fun thing because not, I don't think many of you have had it. I was doing uh, men's retreats in Japan, uh, Japan, usually once a year. And so this, I don't remember exactly what year this is. I guess it's 2006. Okay, so it was all about business, right? So I'm busy doing the business retreat. We're almost done on the first day, Saturdays and Sundays they usually were. And at the end of the Saturday, there was a rebellion. <laughs> I was kind of shocked. They said, we, we don't want to do this. This is not what we want to be talking about. This isn't what we want to be working about. We want to work on how to get along with our wives better. <laughs> I thought it was so beautiful. It was so such a surprise. So we put aside everything with business, and then we thought, well, what are we going to do? And uh, eventually, working together, because the Japanese people are incredible in their creativity, we came up with the idea of an experiment of gratitude. And the experiment was this. For six weeks, as you're getting ready for bed at night, you will silently, without telling your wife what you're doing or your partner what you're doing, give them gratitude for how they serve you. In the morning, when you wake up, you will silently, from your heart, give gratitude for what you've been doing. As a, to your wife, I'm sorry, I was distracted there, for example. And then at the end of the six weeks, and by the way, if you didn't remember it night or day, you could do it any time during the day. You just needed to say you weren't going to tell your partner what you were doing. So at the end of the six weeks, um, I send them all a survey. 
And with the exception of three people, the rest of them had done it. And there are many, many questions on this survey, but I just chose one. I thought you would find it interesting. Was this experiment effective for you? 58% said they were, it was very effective and their life had been changed. Effective was 38%. Neutral was zero. Not effective. They really worked on it, but 4% of the people didn't think it helped. Not so effective and not effective at all, zero people said. And what were the specific effects? The importance of changing myself, it must be I who change first. I have less anger to my partner. By doing gratitude in the morning, the rest of my day followed very well. Anyway, you get the idea of what it means to give gratitude from the spiritual world. No one was saying to their partner that, that what they had been doing. Then are two other things I want to share that are basically daijo, shoujo kinds of things is, I did a lot of speech training while we were there, and uh, the thing I basically talked about is the circle is approach, is the circle approach to speaking, which you introduce what you're going to speak about, then you have three supporting things, and then you close with what you started with. Now the problem with that as I was walking with Kenji Bond is I'm not following that in this speech. I am giving you a little bit more than three things. But anyway, that was a fun thing that we all did and uh, I felt very moved to be invited to do that and as, um, as uh, Kaizo Dome said to me, you can use this concept in many things, not just speaking. Finally, a friend of mine, Juanita Brown, wrote a book called The World Cafe and came up with the idea of circle conversations that were like cafes. And Meishu Sama says, our job is to elevate our souls and elevate our characters. For me, I translate this as fully alive. So World Cafe is circle conversations trying to get collective intelligence. In 2008, we held one here for the National Agriculture Conference. We broke into seven groups, and the question each group addressed was, what, is what, we, what can we do to promote uh, ag natural agriculture? There were seven groups, and we had nine pages of ideas. So that is another principle of the circle and the dot, as Mesha Sama says. Um, and here is Shoujo Daijo Izanomi. We must elevate our souls. That is the elevation you must achieve as an elevation of character. When I say that you must become a person of the 21st century, that is us, by the way, that is what I mean. So one more time, and then we're going to move on. All right. Shoujo, Daijo, Izunomi, and we're going to say Kaijin. We aren't there quite yet. Um, well, all of you have heard a lot today about Jore and about natural agriculture and aesthetics. What I want to say is the Shume members really amaze me. Another thing we did is create skits, break into small groups, and they were like Hollywood productions. Now, a lot of people said, oh, well, you know, that's just fun. It doesn't mean anything. But what emerges from that? is the two most popular skits were about Jore, their personal experiences with Jore, their group experience with Jore, their healing experience with Jore. The second one was natural agriculture. What happened in their families when they began to, as world citizenship citizens, we should pay attention to not only our connection to light, but also what food. We have to put living food in our bodies. So they had many stories about natural agriculture and healing and also getting along better. So uh, I want to say that the number one thing is I as I said, was Jore, but I don't have any pictures of what we were doing. There's no digital times, at least for myself between 2000 and 2004. So I took this as a slide to show you. This is Jore at the Prayer Vigil for the Earth. 
Okay, and you can see that the jore is spreading. And this is natural agriculture, which I consider, as John Zhou said, the circle, the heart of the seed, the heart of the farmer, the heart of the soil, and the heart of the consumer. I've got the move ahead Sharon signal. So, okay, I want to say the one thing I really, really enjoyed, well, I enjoyed all of it, but I had a really special feeling about um, the Miho. And it's designed to show us paradise on earth. And we reenacted Miho art. I have two examples here. One of my favorite retreats was on the Hebo Canon in the Black Forest of Germany. Um, I could say more about this, but she is holding the willow of healing and pouring the oil of blessing on us. And we enacted as if she were doing that, whether it's Kaitusama or Kanon or whatever you see. And then finally I'll say, and then I'll be done just about with uh, the broken vase here, which most of us would discard the Japanese people so often make something beautiful. And this is um, a great thing for us to remember when we feel broken and hurt. God can make something beautiful out of us. And finally, there's a new science called the science of neuroesthetics, or how does beauty impact your life? So we're going to move on to, and this is our second to last slide, Seikaijin means world citizen. So let's do this one. Shoujo, Daijo, Izunomi, Seikaijin. Okay, my last slide is us doing this at a retreat and us lifting the world to the best possible place. Thank you very much.